Hoi Hin is truly slept on. We spent six days there and genuinely it wasn't enough to do everything in Hoi Hin and the surrounding areas. It's not just the most amazing place to go for a relaxing beach holiday with some fantastic resorts, but also there's a lot of really great culture in the surrounding areas and some amazing national parks. In this video, I wanna share with you the top things to do in Hoi Hin and around in the surrounding areas. If you're new here, hi, my name's Matt. I'm a travel content creator from the UK and I've just spent the last three weeks traveling around Thailand, shooting content with the Thai Tourism Board. So if you wanna see more of what I got up to, click on that playlist up there. And future videos, make sure you click on the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you get notified for those weekly uploads. Now in no particular order, let's start with number one on that list of what you should do in Hoi Hin and the surrounding areas. So first is take a visit to Sam Roy Yod National Park. This was a genuinely stunning experience. I've never seen a cave quite like it in my entire life. This is a cave with a pavilion structure that was built by King Rama V as a way of escaping his royal duties when he visited Hoi Hin. And he built this stunning pavilion in this enormous cave. And when you travel there and you see it for yourself, you really get a, a true perspective of the size of the cave and this small pavilion. Now, this was actually a tour which we booked privately through a company and I will leave the link to book them in the video description below. It was really well organized. We were picked up from our hotel and we drove through Sam Royod National Park, which is about an hour's drive just outside of Hoi Hin. It was a stunning scenic drive. You see the Sam Royod National Park and you can actually stay there overnight in one of their little villas and you can hike up to the top to give you some stunning views. But for our trip, we took a visit to the Ban Bang Fu fishing village first, which is also where we took our long tail boat on a 10 minute journey through the water, which was a really beautiful experience. And we were dropped off at Lam Salah Beach, which is the most famous beach in the Samroyad National Park. This beach was stunning, white sand, and it was here that we started our 20, 25 minute hike up to Fryanakon Cave. The walk up was a lot of fun because on the way up, we saw these monkeys and it was just wicked to see monkeys because it was the first time during my time in Thailand to see them. And then we got to the cave, spent some time there. The tour guide that was taking us around gave us the information that we needed to know so we better understood what we were seeing. And then we made our way back to get some Thai lunch, which was also included on the tour. And then we spent about an hour on the beach just to relax our legs, which was lovely because the weather was good, the beach was lovely. All of this information I would never have known unless I'd have booked with a guide and a tour company, which is why I suggest you guys do the same. Next travel tip in Hoi Hin is to book a private taxi driver. Now, the reason that I'd say to do that is because Hoi Hin isn't the biggest place. You can see everything that you need to see in Hoi Hin in a day, but also it's great because if you hire a private taxi driver, he can also take you to the neighboring city of Pechaburi. And we did exactly that. We visited Pechaburi, we visited all the sites in Hoi Hin in one day for 10 hours for around 2,800 baht pretty simple to find. I'll leave a link to the taxi company that I used in the video description. I found them really reliable. I also used them to book my taxi from Bangkok to Hoi Hin, for which I paid about 1500 baht, so not expensive. Really professional service, air-conditioned vehicles, and it was just a better experience for me, I think, than catching a local bus from Bangkok to Hoi Hin or catching the train to Hoi Hin. Now this leads me nicely onto number three and number four of the top things to do whilst you are staying in Hoi Hin. This is visiting Pechaburi. And the two things that you absolutely must do in Pechaburi is visiting the Pechaburi Palace. Now Pechaburi Palace was incredibly quiet. Whilst we were there, there was only one other group of people, like a couple, 
and they were Thai. And that is because not many tourists really visit Pechaburi. It's more popular for local Thai people on school trips because there's quite a bit of history. It was actually the trading point between Myanmar and Ayutthaya back during the Ayutthaya period. But this is before Myanmar did invade Ayutthaya and burn it to the ground. And actually a lot of the relics from Ayutthaya were moved to Pechaburi. And that is why Pechaburi is to this day known as the living UTR because a lot of a UTR was destroyed. So a lot of those relics and a lot of those main pieces have made their way over to Pechaburi. So to local people in Thailand, Pechaburi does have a lot more significance to them. They learn about it in their history. Personally, I think if you're staying in Hoi Hin, it's only an hour's drive over to Pechaburi and it's worth seeing the Pechaburi Palace, which you know was built by one of the kings for his stargazing. He loved the stars, he loved looking into space, and that's why he built the palace in Pechaburi. There's also a really nice temple there which resembles the Grand Palace and the Temple of the Emerald Buddha because the king wanted, of course, to pray whilst he was doing his stargazing in Pechaburi. But a really beautiful experience and a lovely palace to see. You can take a cable car up to the top or you can walk up to the palace. Either way, you'll have a great time and you'll probably see some monkeys whilst you're there. Next up in Pechaburi, number four is visit Tam Kau Long Cave. I hope I said that correctly. Now, this was a favorite of the kings to come to meditate, especially when they were training to be monks. There's many different Buddha statues within the cave. There's a reclining Buddha, which is stunning, but also there's two skylights, and it's these skylights that really make this place stunning, because if you come at the right time, the light shines through, you've got sunbeams, and you can get a really incredible photo. And for me, you know, the caves in Thailand are an absolute must visit, and this is one that you absolutely have to add to your list if you're in Pechaburi. It is a stunning, stunning place. Now to get to the cave, you'll take a tuk-tuk, which is included in your entry fare. So you'll just go to the meeting point with your driver, he'll drop you off and you'll take a tuk-tuk and you'll see the most monkeys that you've ever seen. There are so many monkeys absolutely everywhere. So don't have any food on you or drinks out in the open because they can be quite aggressive and they are known to steal things off tourists. Next up, number five. Within Hoi Hin, you need to see the Wat Hoi Mon Kol. Now, this is a statue of a very famous monk known as Luang Pho Thuad. Now, this monk was known to do miracles. He turned salt water from the sea into drinking water multiple times, apparently. But there's a real sense of awe when you get to this monk. Like, the size of it is enormous. And I absolutely love this about Thailand. They do things really exaggerated, you know, these structures, they build them so, so big. And this is another unique place that, you know, even if you've done the temples in Bangkok or temples in Hoi Hin, it's another unique place that you will have not seen before and you can't compare it to any others. So definitely visit it, definitely walk around it, see the absolute sheer size of this monk and it's really amazing to see as well the locals walk underneath the elephants that are at the base of it because they believe that by doing so this will bring good luck to them so definitely visit the Wat Hoi Mon Kakal. Next up, visit the Hoi Hin train station. Now, chances are, if you're traveling from Bangkok into Hoi Hin or you're leaving Hoi Hin by train, you'll actually be getting off at this station or arriving to this station. It's a really unique train station in that it's one of the oldest and probably the prettiest train station in the whole of Thailand. It's great history behind it, definitely worth seeing. It's built in the same kind of Thai style with teak wood and you know with no nails um, it's a real hot spot for taking some photos you can actually walk across the train line get some good photos there next up number seven on that list visit chopstick hill now i wouldn't even say you'd be visiting chopstick hill necessarily for the temple and you know five minutes around the corner the beautiful shrine with multiple different religious structures there you're probably going to want to visit this place for the monkeys. I've never in my life seen as many monkeys living in harmony with other animals in my life. This place was full of them. There was a pig there, there was many dogs, like little puppies, chickens, and that's because I think the guy that lives there actually kind of runs this place like a farm. It's almost like these monkeys have developed human uh, instincts because I saw a monkey drinking from a bottle like a human being and that was mental because he was enjoying his juice and that's fine because 
juice is nice and the monkey likes it. So Chopstick Hill, otherwise known as Monkey Hill, uh, definitely visit that. Now, number eight, make a visit to Hoi Hin Beach. Hoi Hin is actually regarded as the middle to upper class place for people, you know, wealthier people from Bangkok to come and unwind. You'll actually see a lot of ties in Hoi Hin because this is where they come. They'll often check into a really high end resort in Hoi Hin and just spend time enjoying the beach. And that is because Hoi Hin really isn't that far. It's only a three hour drive from Bangkok. It's really easy to get to. And personally, I think Hoi Hin's a great place to come if you have just spent six days, seven days in Bangkok, exploring the crazy, vibrant, energetic city that Bangkok is. Come to Hoi Hin to unwind. There's a slower pace. It's a lovely, lovely place. And what better way to unwind than at the beach? Hoi Hin Beach is a huge stretch of beach. It's lovely, white sand, very pretty. There's horse riding that you can do there. I saw the horse, jumped on it, 150 baht, it's cheap, it was lovely. And yeah, Hoi Hin Beach, you've got to add it to your list of things to do when you come to Hoi Hin. Next up, number nine, join a food tour with Feast Thailand. Now, I'll leave a link in the video description below to book with them. I can highly recommend this food tour. It's unique to many other food tours that I've done because if you're in Thailand and only there for a short period of time and you're not visiting all the different parts of Thailand, this tour was a great way to taste the different regions of Thailand. We tasted food from the north region of Thailand, the northeast, the south of Thailand, and central Thailand. We tasted cow soy from Chiang Mai, which is probably one of my favorite Thai dishes because it has the fried noodles on top in this bowl, and it's absolutely delicious. We tasted these sticky rice noodles, which were amazing, tom yam soup, which was delicious, all from the different regions. There was around 15 different dishes and we had a knowledgeable tour guide which explained to us what we were eating. We finished with this really spicy Chinese inspired southern Thai dish which was delicious as well. All of the food was fantastic on this tour and we got around using a local Song Tao. We also learned why it's called a Song Tao because Song is two and Tao is rose. So that's where the name comes from for a Song Tao. So you know on these tours that I recommend. I recommend them because you gain a lot more value than just what it's selling. It's not just a food tour. You get a knowledge of tour guide that you're gonna learn about the different places. You're gonna learn about the reputable places to try these foods. And personally, I think this is a fantastic tour and one that you should definitely book. Last on that list, number 10, it is take a trip to Kuiburi National Park to see the elephants. Wow, the elephants in Thailand my new favorite animal. I'm obsessed with them. It was an adorable, adorable thing to see them just out in nature, being elephants, being untouched, like in their natural habitat on this tour. Now the tour that we booked involved getting picked up from our hotel, taking an hour's drive over to Kuriburi, and en route you actually travel again through Samroyod National Park so you can see how beautiful it is with the mountains. But we arrived there in the afternoon at the National Park and it was a two hour trip on a four by four uh, car through the National Park and it involved stopping off at five different viewpoints to see the elephants. It was really well organized and it was an afternoon trip so we got picked up from the hotel at 1 p.m. and was back in the evening but it was lovely to see these elephants just roaming freely in their natural habitat. It's also connected to the biggest national park in the whole of Thailand known as Krang Kashang which is another day trip that you can do but we didn't do this on our trip but I absolutely loved it here. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site for Thailand, the Kuiburi Elephant Park and my only criticism of it would be that we couldn't get closer to the elephants, but in all honesty, I shouldn't be criticizing that because these elephants should be allowed to do what they want to do and roam in their natural habitat without humans disturbing them. So even though that's my criticism because I just wanted to be closer to them and touch them and see them, it was stunning to you know, see from a distance them just enjoying themselves and you know, roaming freely. We also saw some gauze, which were a mix between water buffaloes and cows. There are plenty of them roaming around freely, and also sometimes they fight with the elephants. Roaming around freely, they're allowed to do what they do in nature, so I'm not complaining, um, but still wonderful. Lovely to see the nature. Great to be on the 4x4, just stood on the back. Um, a really, really cool, unique experience. 
Now, sometimes between September and November, the park does close. So if you do travel between those months, make sure you check online. And the reason for that is to allow some respite for the animals so there is no humans and no vehicles traveling through the national park. So just to allow the place to get back to normal. Again, to book this tour, I will leave a link in the video description. I can highly recommend it. Book with them and you don't have to worry about, you know, organizing your own transport and faffing around because also this tour involved a stop off at a local restaurant which had delicious Thai food as well on your return. So guys, there you have it. That is the top 10 things that you absolutely must do when you travel to Hoi Hin. I would really suggest if you are coming to Hoi Hin, spend at least five days. For us, it probably wasn't enough because again, when you come to Hoi Hin, you're not just gonna wanna visit Hoi Hin. You wanna do the surrounding areas. You wanna visit the national parks. You know, even with five days, we didn't really get enough time to do the night market, do Market Village, which is a shopping center, which we did stop off in very briefly, but we didn't really get time to just chill at the beach and do what Hoi Hin is really famous for. Again, if anybody tells you you can do this in two days or Hoi Hin in a day, they don't know what they're talking about. Genuinely, book it for an extended period. You'll absolutely love your time there. So guys, I hope this one has been helpful. If you have enjoyed it, hit the like button down there and also subscribe to the channel for more weekly content and hit the bell notification button so you get notified. But also leave a comment in the video description below if I have missed anything out of this list of top things to do in Hoi Hin and around. And also check out these other videos on my channel and this playlist right here, which contains many more from the Hoi Hin series. But as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.